Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you like the content, hit the subscribe button, leave a like down below. With news being pretty slow in the wrestling video game world, uh, I found this article that showed 10 wrestlers that aren't going to be in next year's game. Now some of them is a big disappointment, and others, to be honest, I didn't even know they were in the game. <laughs> anyway, so, let's go through this list real quick. This is from the Sportster. I'll leave you a link in the description down below. Now, number one. Bobby Lashley. His contract expired in August. He has signed with AEW already. Uh, Lashley made a series debut back in SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. He had an overall of 89 in 2K24. He saw his contract expire in August 2024. Uh, after making his WWE return back in 2018, Lashley went straight back to his winning ways. This would see him capture the Intercontinental United States and WWE Championships, one of his biggest contributions to the company was during the pandemic as Lashley and MVP would create the Hurt Business faction joined by Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. I know Shelton went with him, I'm not sure about Cedric, but yeah, it's uh, it sucks that we lost Lashley because Lashley was being built up to be like another Brock Lesnar and I don't know why they just stopped using him. I mean, he could have been another Brock level talent. He is a Brock level talent. I don't know why they wouldn't. I've I've always been annoyed of how the the crappy usage of Bro, uh, Bobby Lashley. He should have been like a multi-time champion. I mean, I don't know. He's he's he is that good. I don't. I just don't understand. I'm I'm speechless because I don't understand how they could have fumbled using Bobby Lashley so much. Anyway, the next one is Damon Kemp has a short had a short career in WWE received an angle to write him off television it was confirmed his contract would not be renewed in July made his series debut in WWE 2K23 so last year's game he had an overall of 68 in 2K24 uh, Damon Kemp seemed promising as he was coming from an amateur wrestling background he signed a contract with WWE in mid 2021 and quickly started appearing on NXT and 205 Live. While he wouldn't have had the most successful run in the company, he did become an asset to the Diamond Mine and No Quarter Catch Crew factions. It would be during the run with NQCC the Kemp's contract was set to expire and WWE decided to not renew it. There would be an angle that saw his former partners attack him and stuff him in the trunk of a car, officially writing him off television. <laughs> what a way to go, huh? Now, next up is Drew Gallick. He was kind of like the the trainer in the training mode, the tutorial for, I want to say, 2K22 and 23? Maybe even 24. But anyway, so T Drew Gallick had some controversy. It says, this saw his contract not getting renewed, made his series debut in 2K19, had an overall of 70 in WWE 2K24, issues came to light at the end of his tenor. Drew Gallick came into the WWE as part of the re revival of the Cruiserweight division and they, they wrote this weird, and quickly became a popular character in the weight class. Gulak would even capture the Cruiserweight Championship becoming the champion that led the division into NXT. Allegations brought to light by Ronda Rousey against Drew Gallick saw him removed from television and an investigation followed suit. Gulak's contract came to an end and, as Triple H and Shawn Michaels stated, they didn't want to renew it, leading Gulak to depart from WWE after nearly a decade. Uh, Scripps had a lackluster run, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. His contract expired in June, made his series debut as Reggie in WWE 2K23, he had an overall of 61 in WWE 2K24, Currently wrestlers wrestles on the independent scene. Okay, Reggie, later known as Scripps, came into WWE with a goofy character and didn't seem like he was going to do much for the company at first. Things changed as he found himself becoming a vital part of the 24-7 championship scene, even having the longest title reign uh, with the belt. While the belt meant nothing, it did give Reggie TV time. 
something he took advantage of. I feel like that 24 seven belt, if they had marketed it better or utilized it better, it actually made the belt look good because it looks like something you get at like, I don't know, like a swap meet or something. If they actually treated the belt like it mattered a lot, like the hardcore belt where it had to be defended 24 seven, that could have been one of the most exciting belts on the roster. I mean, they could have had, I don't know, Cody beat the crap out of some guy and get a pinfall on accident or I don't know, Brock destroy someone, like put it on Brock, but it turned out to be just like a joke title or they'd give it to the jobbers and it really sucked. And, and in fact, winning the belt kind of hurt whoever won its uh, career in the end to the point where when, uh, was it Nikki Cross, couldn't even, she couldn't even make the basket of throwing it in the garbage can. That's how little that belt meant by the end of it. And it was, oh yeah. It was it was sad. It was it was a perfect sum up of how much that belt mattered. It wasn't even worth making a shot in the garbage can, but it sucks because it could have been so much better. Oy. All right, now next up, uh, Zia Lee spent seven years with WWE. I believe she went to uh, TNA Impact or whatever TNA Wrestling. Yeah, so okay, right here. Now competes in TNA. Made her series debut in WWE 2K22. Had an overall of 73 in 2K24. Announced she was leaving WWE on social media. Another promising star from NXT that never got to realize that potential that she had. The first role with the WWE was after a promising tryout in 2017. Zia Lee competed in the first ever Mae Young Classic. After that, nothing seemed to stick as she would have some decent matches showcase her talent and nothing happened because of that. Yeah, it kind of sucks. She, she was really cool. Uh, Lee would announce the news that she was leaving WWE on social media with news accounts reporting the news shortly after. Since leaving, Lee has been working in Japan and with TNA as a regular member of that roster. Uh, Sanga appeared in one video game, had been under contract with WWE since 2018, made his series debut in 2024, he had an overall of 71. He would have he would be released in April. The uh, Indusheer faction didn't sh didn't have the best 2024, despite the relative promise that the group seemed to have at one point. The group had some fun stories and matches in NXT, but were called up to the main roster during the 2023 draft. This move saw them losing often and not being received the way they were during their time in NXT. Both Veer, Mahan, oh yeah, I remember the Veer is coming and it became a meme. <laughs> and poor Dom, <laughs> I, remember, I remember that. Uh, Mahan and Sangha would attempt to participate in the tag team ladder match at WrestleMania 40 before having one final match in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, Jinder Mahal had two tenors with WWE. I remember Jinder Mahal. It was crazy when he got his title run because it was just like <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, his second run saw him become the WWE Champion. Made his series debut in WWE 13. That was a long time ago. Had an overall of 74 in 2K24. Has been wrestling in GCW and Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. Speaking of Indusheer, it is only felt right that Jinder Mahal received his own spot as he is a former WWE Champion. Mahal had been released by WWE before back in 2014 and this would see him revamp his look and come back better than ever before in 2016. This change in, in appearance was one of the major reasons he was pushed to the main event in 2017. It seemed to only go downhill after the title reign came to an end however as Mahal was more often than not booked to lose and would only see one other important championship reign, that being the United States Championship. See, I hate when they do that with current, you know, certain champions. They they like get a one big push, and then I guess at the time, because now Vince is gone, but at the time, and then Vince would get bored of him. Like poor, uh, uh, what's his name? The poor Miz, like he had one huge title reign where he got to beat Cena at WrestleMania. And I don't think he ever won the belt ever again. It was like after that, no, oh, you're mid card now. That's it. You're done. It's like, but, but just that's it. Just one. Oy. And then Kofi Kingston. I mean, the list is huge. 
if you think about it. Anyway, num another one here. I, I don't know what number on. I've just been going through the list here. MVP has become a member of AEW. He manages Shelton Benjamin on television, made his series debut in SmackDown vs. Raw 08, had an overall of 68 in 2K24. Ooh, that's low. But he's more of a manager now than a wrestler, so kind of make I guess that makes sense. Made his WWE return in 2020. Another name that made a huge return to the company after some years away is that of MVP. First appearing in a backstage segment, MVP was asked to come back for the Royal Rumble in 2020, and on the back of that would become a member of the roster and backstage producer. Okay. As mentioned in Bobby Lashley's entry, the Hurt Business became a huge part of WWE during the pandemic and saw the group become hugely successful. And why did they let it just crumble? I hate it when they do stuff like this. Oy. The WWE 2K series needs to continue adding the, oh, their already stacked roster with these legends. Yeah, no doubt. All right, the next one, and this, this is an obvious one, is Beth Phoenix. She ended her second WWE run, often did commentary for NXT, it says. She made her series debut back in SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Man. That game is so old that there was a version of it on the PS2. Just just to give you a you know, food for thought. Obviously it has a 360 and PS3 version, but it, it was on the PS2 also. Uh, it had an overall of 87, or she had an overall of 87 in 2K24. Let her contract run out and became a free agent. On a more positive note, from the many talents who saw their contracts end out of, bl out of the blue, Beth Phoenix willingly decided to let her time with WWE come to an end. This was confirmed during an interview with Chris Van Vallee on August 15th, 2024. It would be during the interview that she confirmed that she and the WWE were still on good terms. But other opportunities arose that she wanted to possibly pursue. Now, if this means joining her husband Adam Copeland in AEW is yet to be seen or if wrestling is still in the avenue she wants to continue forward with. You know, I'm surprised she never started like her own fitness business. I mean, maybe she did. I have no idea. I <laughs> never looked it up. But I feel like she'd be a great like fitness um, pioneer. You know, because I mean, she was fit back back then when we were still doing divas, diva matches, and everybody, all the women had to be you know overly sexualized and stuff like that. But back then, she was like. She was like all the women's wrestlers now, jacked. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something she could look into. All right, the next one is Ricochet. He left for AEW and has done pretty much nothing. <laughs> like most of the people that leave WWE. Uh, he became the first WWE Speed Champion before leaving. Made his series debut in 2K19. Had an overall of 81 in 2K24. Quickly made his AEW debut at All In. Last but not least, there is no no chance that Ricochet will be making a return to 2K series now that he is working with All Elite Wrestling. WWE made it a big deal when writing him off television as he was feuding with Braun Breaker and had the angle that saw him have to be carried away in an ambulance. After that, it wouldn't be long before Ricochet made his debut as a surprise entrant during the Casino Battle Royale at All In at Wembley Stadium. Since arriving, fans have gotten to see Ricochet mix it up with Will Ospreay once again and hover around the AEW International Championship. I feel like Ricochet's style kind of complements AEW. I feel like they, they he fits better there, in my opinion, because their style of wrestling where they do all these spots and all these crazy... Uh, what do you call it? Well, spots is what it's called. When you do all these crazy spots over the top acrobatics and stuff i feel like he fits in with aew better than wwe wwe is very old school uh storytelling although they do have some matches where they go super spot heavy but i don't know that strong style like in japan and it's just aew has a different style it's not for everybody but i feel like ricochet style fits with aew a lot better than it did with wwe so i'm glad that he's found somewhere that he's happy with now there are some names on this list, or that are not on this list, that also got released. I want to say last, or this week. And that was 
Baron Corbin, Tegan Knox, and Indy Hartwell. Now I don't have all this information like they had for the other wrestlers from this article, but uh, Baron Corbin, oh, that that's a big bummer because he had such a crazy like tenor there. He was. <laughs> he, really, he never really got did he ever win the championship i don't think he ever won the world the wwe championship or the new world championship but man he i guess he could hang his hat on saying he got to give kurt angle his retirement match i think that's a worthy way to you know a worthy thing to add to your resume but never winning the big one really that's that's got a sting if that was me because like his his first gimmick, Baron Corbin, the like what was it, the lone wolf or whatever, had the long hair, and then he shaved his head, and then he became uh, what was it, like the casino gimmick, and now he's business tycoon. I don't know. I feel like once he shaved his head bald, he, he to me personally he became uninteresting. <laughs> I've talked about the bald gimmick before. To me, the only really good bald gimmick would be Stone Cold, and bald's not a gimmick. It's in the world of wrestling, everything's a gimmick. Okay, I have a beard gimmick. I got the beard gimmick going. Uh, let's say you had nose hair; it'd be a nose hair gimmick. It's just something you say. It's not like, oh, it's his gimmick. No, no, no. It's not. What I'm, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Uh, when you get a coffee, you got a coffee gimmick. It's just, it's just something wrestlers say. Okay, <laughs> it's nothing. I'm not saying that his whole gimmick is based because because he's bald. That's not what I'm saying. Anyway. So, what are these? Which of these wrestlers are you most disappointed not going to be in 2K25? Are there others that I missed on this list? Sound off the comments below. Thank you for watching. And sorry I got tongue tied. Happens. <laughs> and stay frosty.